Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 311th installment of the Bible in a Year. Today's readings include Jeremiah chapters 40 through 42 and Hebrews chapter 4. Jeremiah remains in Judah. Chapter 40. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he took him bound in chains, along with all the captives of Jerusalem and Judah, who were being exiled to Babylon. The captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said to him, The Lord your God pronounced this disaster against this place. The Lord has brought it about and has done as he said. Because you sinned against the Lord and did not obey his voice, this thing has come upon you. Now behold, I release you today from the chains on your hands. If it seems good to you to come with me to Babylon, come, and I will look after you well. But if it seems wrong to you to come with me to Babylon, do not come. See, the whole land is before you. Go wherever you think it good and right to go. If you remain, then return to Gedalia, the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon appointed governor of the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people, or go wherever you think it right to go. So the captain of the guard gave him an allowance of food and a present, and let him go. Then Jeremiah went to Gedalia. Then Jeremiah went to Gedalia the son of Ahikam, at Mizpah, and lived with him among the people who were left in the land. When all the captains of the forces in the open country and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, governor in the land, and had committed to him men, women, and children, those of the poorest of the land who had not been taken into exile in Babylon, they went to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, Johanan, the son of Kariah, Sariah, the son of Tanhumeth, the sons of Ephi, the Netophathite, Jezaniah, the son of the Maacite, they and their men, Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, swore to them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon and it shall be well with you. As for me, I will dwell at Mizpah to represent you before the Chaldeans who will come to us. But as for you, gather wine and summer fruits and oil, and store them in your vessels. Dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Judeans who were in Moab among the Ammonites and in Edom and in other lands heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judah and had appointed Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, the governor, over them. Then all the Judeans returned from all the places to which they had been driven, and came to the land of Judah, to Gedalia at Mizpah. And they gathered wine and summer fruits in great abundance. Now Johanan, the son of Koriah, and all the leaders of the forces in the open country, came to Gedalia at Mizpah, and said to him, do you know that Baalus, the king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to take your life? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, would not believe them. Then Johanan, the son of Kariah, spoke secretly to Gedaliah at Mizpah. Please let me go and strike down Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and no one will know about it. Why should he take your life so that all the Judeans who are gathered about you would be scattered, and the remnant of Judah would perish. But Gedaliah the son of Ahikam said to Johanan the son of Kariah, You shall not do this thing, for you are speaking falsely of Ishmael. Gedaliah murdered, chapter 41. In the seventh month, Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama of the royal family, one of the chief officers of the king, came with ten men to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, at Mizpah. As they ate bread together there at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men with him, rose up and struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, 
son of Shaphan, with the sword, and killed him, whom the king of Babylon had appointed governor in the land. Ishmael also struck down all the Judeans who were with Gedalia at Mizpah, and the Chaldean soldiers who happened to be there. On the day after the murder, on the day after the murder of Gedaliah, before anyone knew of it, eighty men arrived from Shechem and Shiloh and Samaria, with their beards shaved and their clothes torn and their bodies gashed, bringing grain offerings and incense to present at the temple of the Lord. And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah came out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he came. As he met them, he said to them, Come in to Gedaliah the son of Ahikam. When they came into the city, Ishmael the son of Nethaniah and the men with him slaughtered them and cast them down into a cistern. But there were ten men among them who said to Ishmael, Do not put us to death, for we have stores of wheat, barley, oil, and honey hidden in the fields. So he refrained and did not put them to death with their companions. Now the cistern into which Ishmael had thrown all the bodies of the men whom he had struck down along with Gedaliah was the large cistern that King Asa had made for defense against Baasha, king of Israel. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, filled it with the slain. Then Ishmael took captive all the rest of the people who were in Mizpah, the king's daughters and all the people who were left at Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, took them captive and set out to cross over to the Ammonites. But when Johanan, the son of Kariah, and all the leaders of the forces with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done, they took all their men and went to fight against Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah. They came upon him at the great pool that is in Gibeon. And when all the people who were with Ishmael saw Johanan, son of Kariah, and all the leaders of the forces with him, they rejoiced. So all the people whom Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah turned around and came back and went to Johanan the son of Kariah. But Ishmael the son of Nethaniah escaped from Johanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. Then Johanan the son of Kariah and all the leaders of the forces with him took from Mizpah all the rest of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael the son of Nethaniah after he had struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, soldiers, women, children, and eunuchs, whom Johanan brought back to Gibeon. And they went and stayed at Gareth Chimham near Bethlehem, intending to go to Egypt because of the Chaldeans. For they were afraid of them because Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Warning against going to Egypt, chapter 42. Then all the commanders of the forces, and Johanan the son of Kariah, and Jezaniah the son of Hoshiah, and all the people, from the least to the greatest, came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Let our plea for mercy come before you, and pray to the Lord your God for us, for all this remnant, because we are left with but a few, as your eyes see us that the Lord your God may show us the way we should go and the thing that we should do. Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your request. And whatever the Lord answers you, I will tell you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act according to all the word with which the Lord your God sends you to us. Whether it is good or bad, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we are sending you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. At the end of ten days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he summoned Johanan the son of Kariah, and all the commanders of the forces who were with him, and all the people of Israel, from the least to the greatest, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your plea for mercy before him. 
If you will remain in this land, then I will build you up and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I relent of the disaster that I did to you. Do not fear the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy that he may have mercy on you and let you remain in your own land. But if you say, we will not remain in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God and saying, no, we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall not see war or hear the sound of the trumpet or be hungry for bread and we will dwell there. Then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you set your faces to enter Egypt and go to live there, then the sword that you fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine of which you are afraid shall follow close after you to Egypt, and there you shall die. All the men who set their faces to go to Egypt to live there shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. They shall have no remnant or survivor from the disaster that I will bring upon them. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my wrath were poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my wrath will be poured out on you when you go to Egypt. You shall become an execration, a horror, a curse, a taunt. You shall see this place no more. The Lord has said to you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Know for a certainty that I have warned you this day that you have gone astray at the cost of your lives. For you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, and whatever the Lord our God says, declare to us, and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you. But you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God in anything that he sent me to tell you. Now therefore know for a certainty that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go and live. And that concludes the reading in Jeremiah. And now Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he said, as I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since, therefore, it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David, so long afterward in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Jesus, the great high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, 
For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And that concludes the reading in Hebrews. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.